Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Also Petit. Welcome back to my channel. In this video I will show you how to make the Penelope backpack. If you would like to follow along and make your own Penelope backpack, then visit my shop where you can purchase the pattern. The Penelope backpack is an ideal companion for carrying your daily essentials. The flap and press lock closure keep your belongings secure, one of the standout features is the double zipper pocket on the front, extending from one side to the other. It's not only stylish, but also incredibly functional. Inside, you'll discover two spacious compartments, perfect for keeping your belongings organized and easily accessible. There is an additional zipper pocket with a decorative overlay and a divider zipper pocket which provide extra security for your valuables. And let's not forget, with adjustable shoulder straps and a handle, it's a breeze to take your backpack wherever you go. So if you are ready to create your own beautiful version of the Penelope backpack, then keep on watching! To make the Penelope backpack, you will need a small piece of non-fraying fabric, such as cork, vinyl or faux leather. You'll need some external fabric and some lining fabric. For my backpack, I'm mixing this beautiful cotton poplin fabric and this black corduroy for the external portion of my backpack. And for the lining, I'm using this waterproof fabric. I highly recommend fusing some woven interfacing to the back of the fabric first, especially if, like me, you are using very lightweight fabric, such as cotton poplin or maybe quilting cotton. This will give the fabric just a little bit more structure, which is very good. Otherwise, whenever you're using fabric that maybe has some stretch or tendency to fray a lot, this is very good as well because it will prevent the fabric from stretching or fraying. Depending on the structure and weight of the fabric that you have chosen for your Penelope backpack, you may need some stabilizer. I highly recommend stabilizers that are flexible, such as fusible fleece, Decoville light or foam. This will give your backpack enough structure and at the same time it is much easier to sew. You will also need two number five and two number three zippers. The length is provided in the sewing instructions. You'll need a ruler to take some measurement, one inch or 2.5 centimeters strap adjusters. You'll need two of them. You'll need two D-rings or rectangle rings that are one inch or 2.5 centimeters. You will need one press lock. And depending on the type of your press lock, you may need a small screwdriver. So my press lock has tiny screws. So I will need a small screwdriver. You'll also need a precision knife or small scissors, your favorite marking tools, small snips to cut a thread or scissors. You will also need few rivets, so you will need a hole puncher or a similar tool so you can punch a hole for your fabric. And also you'll need some tools to set your rivets, so I have my hand press ready here. You'll also need some clips or pins to hold your fabric in place. Seam ripper just in case if something goes wrong and you need to uh, unpick your fabric. You may also need multi-surface glue or fray check glue and a double-sided tape. You will need to cut two straps from external fabric, two pocket trims from external fabric, cut them as mirror images. So when you place them right sides together, they are exactly the same. So to ensure that you cut your fabric the correct way, you can place two pieces of fabric right sides together, then take your pocket trim pattern piece, place it on top, trace it and cut it out. If you don't want to cut two pieces at the same time, you can always 
open your fabric, keep it with the right side up, then take your pocket trim pattern piece, cut it out one piece, then you will have to flip your pocket trim pattern piece facing down and then cut the second piece. You will need to cut one back trim from external fabric, one strap connector from external fabric, one pocket overlay from non-fraying fabric, two zipper tabs from lining fabric, one handle from external fabric, one base from external fabric, two side panels from external fabric, one back from external fabric, one front from external fabric and one from your lining fabric. You will need to cut one front pocket from your lining fabric. As you can see, I used my external fabric this time. The reason why is that I'm going to fuse some fusible fleece to the back of the fabric later on and it's going to be very difficult if I was going to use my waterproof fabric for that. So that's why I picked this fabric instead. You will also need to cut one flap from external fabric and one from your lining fabric. Again, I cut the lining piece from external fabric because I fused some fleece to the back. You'll need to cut two divider pockets from your lining fabric, two zipper pockets from your lining fabric, one front lining and one back lining from your lining fabric. And lastly, you will need to cut two dividers from your lining fabric. Depending on the combination and type of fabric and stabilizer that you have chosen to make your Penelope backpack, you may need to reduce the bulk at the seams. So there are a few options to do that. If you are using a fusible stabilizer like me, you may want to use the dotted lines on your pattern pieces as templates. So this means that you don't have stabilizer inside your seam allowance. Since I'm using very lightweight fabric and also very lightweight thin stabilizer, this is just a fusible fleece, I decided to fuse the entire fabric, but I omitted the top edge. So the top edge of your backpack has 1.5 centimeters seam allowance, that's 5 eighths of an inch, and this edge will be folded. So once we construct our backpack, that's the top edge of our backpack. So this is the side panel here. And to reduce the bulk, I omitted the fusible fleece from that seam allowance. You can do exactly the same thing even if you are using sew-in stabilizer. So usually you would use the entire pattern piece to cut the sew-in stabilizer and then baste it around all sides to your fabric. But to reduce the bulk at the top edge of your backpack, again, you can fold the seam allowance away Cut your stabilizer, then you would place it on top. So normally I would measure 1.5 centimeters, 5 eighths of an inch and draw a line. So I know I have a nice sharp edge. Then you would place your sew-in stabilizer on top and only baste around those outer edges so you would leave the top edge unbasted if you want you can use some glue or double-sided tape to hold that top edge in place take your pocket overlay and on the wrong side of the fabric apply some double-sided tape then you can peel off the plastic cover take your back lining piece and measure four centimeters from the top edge. So I'm going to just take my ruler, place it on top. So this is the right side of the fabric. I have marked the midpoint as well on the lining and I have midpoint on my pocket overlay. So I'm going to make sure that I have the four centimeter lined up. 
then you're going to place the pocket overlay on top so right sides are facing up make sure you have your midpoints aligned line up the edges so I'm placing the top edge of my pocket overlay at the edge of my ruler press it with the fingers line up the bottom edge of the pocket overlay now you can take this to the machine and top stitch around the outer edge so about two millimeters from the edge what i like to do is to instead of back stitching at the start and the end i typically leave long thread tails so then later i can tie a knot on the back of the fabric so i'm going to do that This is how it looks like. So now what I like to do is to pull the thread tails to the back of the fabric. So I use a pin or a needle to do that. There we go. Then I can tie a knot to secure them in place. I do that a couple of times, cut any excess and I use multi-surface glue to just dab a little bit of glue on top of the knot to prevent it from unraveling. Now we're going to take scissors and cut away the fabric from that window. So what I like to do is to fold my fabric in half just snip it in the center, then cut it along in both directions. Make sure you don't cut your pocket overlay. I'm going to snip it in both direction along the shorter edges and then cut it away. So take your time don't rush and cut enough fabric so it's not showing inside that window now you can take one of your zipper pockets and number three zipper Place it on top, so right sides are facing up, and line up the zipper in opposite direction than you want your pocket to open. So for example, I like my zippers to open from left to right, so I need to place my zipper in opposite direction. So now the zipper opens from right to left. So line it up along the top. You can clip that in place. Then you can take this to the machine and base the zipper to your pocket along the top edge. Apply double-sided tape along both edges of your zipper. Then you're going to take your back lining piece, peel off the plastic cover from your double-sided tape and place the pocket and the zipper inside that window. So what you need to do is to flip the zipper pocket upside down and then center the zipper inside that window. So I like to do one edge at the time so you're going to center the zipper inside, press it with your fingers, then if you need to you can 
unstick and realign the other edge. Here we go. When you are ready, you can take this to the machine and top stitch only along the bottom edge. So leave the sides and the top as it is. You are only top stitching along that bottom edge. So if you want, you can leave long thread tails at the beginning and the end, then pull the tails to the back of the fabric and tie knots to secure them in place. Once you've got that stitched, you can take this to the pressing station, place the pocket down and press the seam nice and flat. But since I'm using waterproof fabric, I'm just going to press that with my fingers. Then you're going to take the second zipper pocket and apply double-sided tape along the top edge. So on the right side of the fabric, you're going to apply some double-sided tape, just like that. Press it with your fingers. Then you can peel off the plastic cover and place your zipper pocket on top. So you want to line up the top edge along the zipper, line up your side edges. Don't worry about the bottom edge. The bottom edge will be too long, but we're going to trim that down in a second. So you want to make sure everything is nice and straight. Here we go, just like that. If you want, you can use a couple of clips just to hold those two pocket pieces in place. Just like that. Then you can take scissors and trim the edges to the same length. Next you're going to take this to the machine and sew the seams. So first we're going to stitch along those remaining sides of our pocket opening. So again Leave long thread tails at the beginning and the end, then pull them to the back and tie knots to secure them in place. After that, you can fold the main lining piece onto itself, just like that, keep it out of the way and sew the pocket around those three sides. Our zipper pocket is now finished, so what I like to do next is to measure three centimeters from the top edge and mark a line on the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm going to do that now. Here we go. You can do that on the front lining as well. This line is a guideline. Later, we're going to fold the top edge by 1.5 centimeters. 5 eighths of an inch and press that edge flat. Since I'm using waterproof fabric, I cannot really press my fabric. So instead, I'm going to apply some double sided tape just along the top edge. I try to keep the double sided tape away from the seam allowance. So I'm going to just apply it along the top edge like this and do that on the other piece as well. Next, you're going to take your zipper tabs and we're going to wrap them around each end of our remaining number three zipper. So to do that, you can mark a line in the center on the wrong side of the fabric, then fold those two edges towards that line, press it flat, fold it one more time 
and press it flat. Then you're going to take your zipper and insert the zipper into that zipper top. So you're basically wrapping your zipper top around the edge of the zipper, just like that. Use clips or pins to hold that in place. Then we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch along those two folded edges. So you want to make sure that the finished length of your zipper is 17 centimeters. So in case if your zipper is slightly longer, make sure that the total length of your zipper is 17 centimeters. All right, once you've got that stitched, you can take scissors and trim the excess zipper top. So the zipper top needs to be the same width as your zipper. Now you can take one divider pocket and place the zipper on top. So right sides are facing up. You're going to line up the zipper along the top edge. So the visible portion of the zipper should be the same length as the top edge of your pocket. There is those little cutout corners. That's where the zipper tap is. So the visible portion of the zipper should be the same as the top edge. So you want to line up the zipper on top, center it and clip it in place. Then you're going to take this to the machine and we're going to base the zipper to the pocket. Now you're going to take one of your divider pieces and again, if you want, measure three centimeters from the top edge and draw a line on the wrong side of the fabric. Then you're going to take your pocket with the zipper and place it on top. So right sides of the fabric are facing each other. You're going to line up the zipper along that top edge. So make sure you center it. Then clip everything together. Now you're going to take this to the machine and sew the seam. So you want to make sure you're going to start at the very edge of the zipper tab. Don't catch the pocket. So here is that little cutout. You want to make sure you fold this out of the way. So you don't want to catch it. You're going to start here where the zipper tab ends stitch across and when you get to the other side again don't catch the seam allowance of your pocket you are only stitching across the zipper top here is the edge of the zipper top so you're going to only sew across that zipper top Once you've got that seam stitched, then you're going to flip the pocket out of the way, bring the seam allowance towards the divider. So you're going to flip the seam allowance down towards the bottom. If you want, you can take this to the pressing station, press that nice and flat. Otherwise, take this to the machine and top stitch across the zipper. So again, you're going to start where the zipper tab ends. You're going to sew across and stop at the other end of your zipper. Once you've got that top stitch, you're going to take this to the pressing station, bring the pocket down, and then you can press the seam nice and flat. Then you're going to take the remaining divider pocket and your divider, 
and repeat those steps on the other side of the zipper. Next, you're going to bring those two pockets right sides together. So flip the dividers out of the way. Bring those two pockets right sides together. Line up the edges. Clip them together. When you are ready, you can take this to the machine and sew along those three edges. So you want to get as close as possible to the zipper. So what I like to do is to start from the bottom and stitch the sides going towards the zipper and then stitch the bottom edge separately. Once you've got that stitched, then you can trim the seam allowance down to five millimeters. So that's about a quarter of an inch. Now you're going to take your back lining and measure one centimeter from the side edges. So take a ruler and measure one centimeter that's three eighths of an inch from the side edges just along the bottom edge and make a little notch just like that you can do that on the front panel as well so again on the wrong side of the fabric measure one centimeter three eighths of an inch and make a little notch Here we go. Then you're going to take your divider, place it with right side facing up, take your back lining and place it on top. So make sure your zippers open in the same direction. Then you're going to line up the bottom edges. So you should have midpoints marked both on your back lining piece and your divider so you can match them up line up the edges and then clip everything together just like that next you're going to take this to the machine and stitch across the bottom edge so we're going to start and stop at those two notches that we just marked so one centimeter three eighths of an inch from the side edges of your back lining. Here is that notch. I'm going to start here, sew across the bottom edge and stop here at the other notch. Once you've got that seam stitched, you're going to take scissors and we're going to snip the seam allowance on our divider going towards the stitching. So here is the beginning of the stitching and I'm going to cut the fabric, just the seam allowance of the divider piece from the bottom edge going towards the beginning of that stitching. So you need to stop about two millimeters two three millimeters that's like an eighth of an inch before you get to your stitching so I'm going to stop like somewhere here so I'm going to take my scissors now I'm flipping this out of the way so I'm only snipping through the divider and you're going to just cut the fabric going towards that stitching just like that so I stopped about two, three millimeters before I got to the stitching. And you're going to do that on both sides. Now we're going to line up the side edges. So to do that, where you just snip the fabric, where the curved 
corner is you're going to maneuver the fabric and bring it so it is aligned along the edge of your back lining so that's why we snip the fabric so it is easier to just turn the fabric like this line up those edges and clip them together and then you'll be able to line up those two edges together so I like to start at the top so I have my top edges aligned and then line up the sides and clip everything together here we go then you're going to do that on the other side as well next we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to sew those two seams using one centimeter seam allowance After you have stitched those two side seams, if you want, you can trim the seam allowance slightly, especially around those curved corners. Then you're going to take this to the pressing station, open the seam allowance and press it flat, just like that. You're going to do that on both sides. Then you're going to fold the top edge by 1.5 centimeters. If like me, you used double-sided tape. Now you can remove the plastic cover from the tape. Make sure your seam is open on the sides and then bring it down. So you are folding the fabric wrong sides together by one and a half centimeters or five eighths of an inch and you're going to do that on the divider as well so i have a small piece of double-sided tape here i'm going to remove the plastic cover and again fold the edge there we go and repeat that on the other side as well next we're going to take the front lining and we're going to repeat the steps on the other side of the divider this is how your lining should look like so you have two separate compartments with a zipper pocket in between so put this aside for later we have finished with our lining take both of your flap pieces and place them right sides together line up around all sides and then clip those two pieces together here we go then you can take this to the machine and sew the seam around the curve leave the top edge as it is we're going to use the top edge later on to turn the flap right side out Once you've got that seam stitched, you can take scissors, if you have a pinking shears, use your pinking shears and then trim the seam allowance by half. Otherwise, use your regular scissors and cut a little triangles around those curved corners. But since I have pinking shears, I'm just going to use them. I like to leave a full seam allowance around the center just to check uh, if I need that extra thickness when I'm installing my press lock. So I'm going to leave 
just this area at full seam allowance and then later I'll be able to check if I need that bulk or not. So now you can turn the flap right side out. Then you can take this to the pressing station and press your flap nice and flat. Before I take this to the machine to top stitch my flap, I like to take my press lock and just fit the flap into that groove just to ensure I have enough fabric. Because sometimes if you are using very lightweight fabric or not enough stabilizer, there is a lot of extra space and your press lock will be loose. So for me, that looks really nice. It sits well. So I'm going to leave the full seam allowance as it is. And next I can take this to the machine and top stitch around the flap. Now we're going to install our press lock. So this is the right side of my flap and this is the right side of the press lock. So what you want to do is to feed the bottom edge of your flap into the groove, that space of your press lock. So what you need to do is to basically feed it inside just like this. Make sure it is nice and centered. I have my center line here so I can make sure that my press lock is centered. Push the lock to the very edge of your fabric. So you want to make sure it is nice and snug, just like this. What I like to do next is to take an owl or a seam ripper and just poke the holes where the screws will be inserted. I want to make sure that the fabric is easier to pierce. Sometimes those screws are blunt, so they don't really pierce the fabric, they just push the fabric. So by piercing the fabric with my owl, I can simply now take this tiny screw and place it inside. But before that, what I like to do is to take some glue and place it inside that screw hole, just a tiny bit, like a little drop. Here we go. Then I'm going to take my screw and a screwdriver and simply insert the screw inside that hole and twist it. Then you're going to take the other screw and repeat on the other side. So just double check if you are happy with everything and then just tighten the screws. Here we go, just like that. To install the back plate of your press lock, first mark the placement of the press lock on the wrong side of the fabric. Then what you want to do is to take the back plate and line up the top edge of the catch bar. So this part here is the catch bar and you want to line up that top edge along the horizontal line of that T marking. So what you want to do is to line up those two pieces just like that. So the top edge of your catch bar and the horizontal line need to be aligned. So what I like to do is to take my washer 
and place it over the bar so then I don't have to worry about trying to remember or trying to figure out which holes I need to mark so I'll place the washer on top then you want to line up the top edge of the catch bar along that horizontal line so now I know exactly where I need to position my washer so then I can just slide it and put it in the center just like that and now I can take a pen and mark the position of my prongs just like that then you can take a precision knife small scissors or seam ripper and cut the fabric through those placements make sure to be very careful you don't want to cut the fabric too much it's always best to cut those little slits slightly smaller so what I do is to just double check if they are big enough all looks good so next if you want you can add some fray check glue along those slits if you worry about your fabric fraying but since I stabilized my fabric I don't really have to worry about it so now you're going to take your back bar and from the right side of the fabric insert the prongs through those slits just like that then take your washer and place it on top so this might be easier if you do it on the edge of the table because the catch bar is a little bit annoying at this point I'm going to try to use my little cutting board as a leverage and then bend the prongs in opposite directions so just take your time if you want you can use pliers to do that I like to glue a small piece of fusible fleece or add a tape to protect the lining from being damaged because once I construct my project I'm going to have a lining here and those edges can be sometimes very sharp so to prevent the fabric from being damaged it's always good to cover that area so I'm just going to use some tape I'm going to cut it and glue it on top just like that Take both of your number five zippers and fold the top edge by 90 degrees. So to do that, you're going to open the zipper, fold the top edge onto itself like this, then bring that folded edge, so pinch it, and bring that folded edge towards the zipper coil. So you want to line up that folded edge along the zipper coil and pin that in place just like that then you're going to do that on the other side so again you're going to fold it onto itself pinch it and then bring that fold towards the coil you want to make sure that your zipper is the same length so if you need to adjust it do that pin that in place here we go then we can take this to the machine and we're going to baste along the edge of our zipper just to hold everything in place here we go just like that so if you have any excess you can just trim it down so it's nice and straight To prevent the zipper tape from fraying, take lighter and just burn the edges quickly. You should have two notches marked on the right side of the fabric. These are the zipper notches. So now you can take your zipper and place it on top of your front piece, right side facing each other. You want to line up that top edge add the notch and line up the 
side of your zipper along the side edge of your fabric and clip everything together. There we go. Then you're going to do that on the other side as well. When you are ready, take this to the machine and baste the zippers about two millimeters from the edge. Now you can take your front lining piece and place it on top. So right sides are facing each other. You're going to place it on top, line it up along all sides and then clip everything together. Next, you can take this to the machine and sew both side seams. Once you've got those two seams stitched, then you can turn the front right side out. Next, you can take this to the pressing station and press your seams nice and flat. Now you can take this to the machine, top stitch along those two finished seams and then baste those two remaining edges. Now you can take your front pocket and your pocket trims. We're going to line up those two trims along the side edges, just like that. To ensure that you line up those pieces correctly, you can place them next to each other with right side facing up. And if the bottom and top edge are straight it means that you placed your pattern pieces correctly one edge of your pocket trim is straight the other one has slight curve at the top so you want to place this straight edge along the edge of your front pocket if i placed my pattern pieces upside down this is how it's going to look like. You will notice suddenly that those edges kind of go upwards. So this is wrong. Hence, I always like to make a little mark on the wrong side of the fabric to so I know exactly which direction is up and down. Now that you know exactly how to line them up, you can place those pocket trims on top. So right sides of the fabric are facing each other line up the side edges and clip them together repeat that on the other side as well now you can take this to the machine and sew both seams once you've got those two seams stitched you can open the panels and press the seam nice and flat. So if you want, you can press the seam allowance towards the center. Otherwise, to reduce the bulk, you can open the seam allowance and press it flat, just like that. Here we go. Then you can take this to the machine and top stitch along both sides of the seam. Now 
now you can add your stabilizer. So if you are using sewing stabilizer, place it on top and then baste around all sides. If like me, you are using fusible stabilizer, uh, you can center it and fuse it to the back of the fabric. Since I decided to trim the top edge, I'm going to first mark the seam allowance on my fabric. So I'm going to measure one and a half centimeters and draw a line. This way, when I place my fleece on top, I can line up the edge of my fleece so I have a nice and straight and neat edge, just like that. And then I'm going to fuse the fleece to the fabric. To protect my iron, I like to use a cloth. So I place the cloth on top and then using a lot of steam, I fuse the fleece to the back of the fabric. To reduce the bulk along the top edge, what you can do is to measure one and a half centimeters from the top edge. So that's where the edge of my fleece is and cut away that seam. So where you have those two seams here, you want to cut away the seam allowance. Or alternatively, if you have a lot of bulk, you can just cut starting from the edge of the seam allowance, cut along the line and then finish here. So you're basically cutting off that entire piece here, which means that later when you place those two pieces together, this becomes our top edge, which is going to be folded just like that. And then you're going to have a lining as well. There is a lot of bulk. So by cutting away that part, you are eliminating at least one layer of the fabric. So I'm going to just cut the entire thing. So I'm going to follow the edge of my fleece. That's the one and a half centimeters or five eighths of an inch mark. And just cut away that part. Here we go. Now you can take your front panel, place it on top. So right sides are facing up. You're going to line it up along all sides and pin or clip everything together. Now you can take this to the machine and baste those two pieces together. Once you've got that basted, you can trim the excess zipper. If you want, you can draw a line along the top edge in the same way we've done for the lining. So measure three centimeters from the top edge and then draw a line, which will be the guideline for you. So later you will know exactly how to fold the top edge of your fabric but since I have the edge of my fleece here at the correct point I'm just going to use the fleece so I know exactly how to fold it. Take your handle and on the wrong side of the fabric mark a line in the center then you can take this to the pressing station and fold those two longer edges towards that line in the center. So with the wrong sides together, you're going to fold the fabric just like this. This edge needs to be lined up with the line and then you can press it flat. Then do that on the other side. Then you can fold the handle one more time and closing those seam allowance. So again, you're going to line up those folded edges 
and press it flat. Here we go. When you are ready, you can take this to the machine and top stitch along those two longer edges. Now you can take your external back panel and mark the midpoint along the top edge. Then what you're going to do is to measure two centimeters from that center point in both directions. So I'm going to use my grid line as a guideline. Measure two centimeters on one side, mark a notch and then do that on the other side as well. Next, you're going to take your handle and place it on top. So you're going to line up this short edge along the top edge of your back panel at the notch, just like that. Clip it in place. Then making sure your handle is not twisted, you're going to bring the other end and line it up along the other notch. Again, clip it in place. Next, you can take this to the machine and baste those two shorter edges. Now you can fold your straps in the same way you've done the handle. So you can mark a line in the center on the wrong side of the fabric, then fold those two longer edges towards the center, fold your strap in half and press everything nice and flat. So once you have your strap pressed, it should look like this. So next you're going to unfold it on one side so keep those two shorter edges folded then you're going to bring them right sides together so we have those two folded edges you're going to fold your strap in half with right sides together and just pin or clip that short end you are only doing it on one side of your strap the other end just leave it as it is so now we can take this to the machine and sew across that short edge here we go so once you've got that stitched you can trim the seam allowance by half then turn your strap right side out here we go so now, if you want, you can clip your strap along the edge. So you want to line up those folded edges, clip them together. And then you can take this to the machine and then you can top stitch the strap along all sides. After you made both of your straps, you can take your strap adjuster and feed the finish end of your strap around the middle bar. So this is how it should look like. So here I have that finish edge. I'm going to take my strap adjuster, feed it through, go around the middle bar and bring it back just like that. So you basically wrapping the strap around that middle bar. You can fold the edge by about four or five centimeters. So I'm going to use my grid line to just measure it and hold it with a clip. Here we go. Then when you are ready, you can take this to the machine, stitch a little box to anchor that end. And if you want, you can stitch a couple of lines in the center or install a rivet.
Now you can take your D-ring and feed the loose end of your strap through the D-ring, just like that. Bring it towards the other end. And then, making sure your strap is not twisted, you're going to feed the end of your strap through the strap adjuster one more time. So we're going to do that in opposite direction. The first time we did it this way, now we're going to do it in opposite direction. So again, you're going to feed it through the strap above the middle bar, then bring it back below the middle bar, just like this, and pull it through. If you need to, you can turn your D-ring so the straight edge is visible, just like this. Now you can take your external bag and place your straps on top. So right sides are facing up. Place the loose end on top and line it up next to the handle along that top edge. You can clip them together. Then do that on the other strap as well. Again, right side is facing up. Line everything up and clip together. Then you can take this to the machine and baste those two straps to the back panel. Now you can take your flap and place it on top. So the lining portion of your flap is facing up. So right sides are facing each other. You're going to line up the flap along the top edge. So make sure you have midpoints so you can match them and clip everything together. Here we go. Then you can take this to the machine and base the flap along the top edge. Now you can take your back trim and if you want, you can measure three centimeters from the top edge and draw a line. This will be the guideline. So later you know exactly how to fold your fabric. But again, since I have the edge of my fleece here, I'm going to skip this step. So now you can take your back panel with the flap, place your trim on top, line up the back trim along the top edge and pin everything together. Here we go. Then you can take this to the machine and sew the seam. Once you've got that stitched, you can press the seam allowance towards the back panel. So you're going to press it down. Then you can take this to the machine and top stitch along that finished seam. If you are using sew-in stabilizer, now is the time to add it to the back of your panel. So place it on the wrong side of the fabric and baste around all sides, unless you have trimmed the top edge. Then like we did on the front, don't baste the top edge and only baste around those three sides. If you want, you can also install a couple of rivets just below the seam line to anchor the straps and handle. So I typically add one here, one here, one here, and one here. Now you can take your strap connector and fold those two longer edges towards the middle. So again, if you want, you can just draw a line in the center, fold those edges towards the middle and press it with an iron. Then you can take this to the machine and top stitch along those two folded edges.
Now you can fold your connector in half and cut it. So you want to make two shorter connectors. Here we go. Now you can take your back panel with your straps and wrap your connectors around the D-rings. So you want to fit it through the D-ring and wrap it around just like that. Clip those two edges together, then repeat it on the other strap. Here we go. Now you can take this to the machine and just baste those raw edges together. Now you can measure two and a half centimeters or one inch from the side edge of your back panel and mark a little notch along the bottom edge and do that on both sides, just like that. Then you're going to take your straps, make sure they are not twisted and place the connector at the notch lining up those raw edges along the bottom of your back panel just like that you can clip that in place and then repeat that on the other strap and strap connector again make sure your strap is not twisted line up the edges and clip them together okay next you can take this to the machine Sew a little box to anchor your connectors in place. And if you want, either install a rivet in the center or stitch a couple of lines. Now you can take your base and with right sides together, place it on top of the front panel, line it up along the bottom edge and clip everything together. Here we go. Then you can take this to the machine and sew the seam. Then you can take this to the pressing station, open the panels and press the seam allowance towards the base panel. So you're going to press it like this. Then you can take this to the machine and top stitch along that finished seam. Now you can take your external back panel and line up the base along the bottom edge. So again, right sides together. Keep the straps out of the way. Line up the bottom edges and clip them together. Here we go. Next, you can take this to the machine and sew the seam. Again, you can take this to the pressing station, press the seam allowance towards the base, and then take this to the machine and top stitch along that finished seam. Now you can take one of your side panels and what we're going to do next is align the side edges of our main backpack around the curve of the side panel. So to start, you can place your side panel on top of the base. You should have midpoints marked along the bottom edge and also the side edge of your base panel. So line them up. Clip those two pieces together. And then you can line up the side edges along the side panel so you're going to have to maneuver the fabric maneuver your external pieces so you can line up the edges and then clip everything together
So make sure the top edges are aligned as well. You're going to have to move the zipper pull out of the way and carry on clipping. Here we go. So it should look like this. This is your side panel. So now you can take this to the machine and sew the seam. If you want, if you are using sewing stabilizer, go ahead and remove or trim away the stabilizer from the seam allowance. This will significantly reduce the bulk, especially around those curved corners. Now you're going to repeat the steps and sew the other side panel on the other side. So I have my side panel here again. Make sure you have midpoints marked on the bottom of your panel and the base. Match them up with right sides together and then pin or clip the side panel to your external backpack. Here we go. Then when you are ready, you can take this to the machine and sew the seam. Once you have the second panel stitched, go ahead, double check if you don't have any puckering. Then in case if you have any stitching showing on the right side of the fabric, what I like to do is to stitch another row of stitches very close to the initial stitching line. So do that and go ahead and stitch all around one more time. Then when you are ready, you can turn your backpack right side out push the seams so you have nice neat corners you should have a nice round corners around the bottom What helps is to roll the fabric just at the seam. Here we go. Okay, so next what you can do is to fold the top edge of your backpack by one and a half centimeters. So wrong sides together, you're going to fold that top edge by one and a half centimeters. So that's five eighths of an inch. If you want, apply some double-sided tape along the top edge and then fold your fabric. Otherwise, you can take this to the pressing station and press that fold nice and flat. After you folded the top edge, you can take your lining and drop it inside your backpack. So make sure the zipper pocket with the overlay is on the back of your backpack. So your lining and your external parts should be wrong sides together. Then you're going to line up the side seam. So here is the side seam on the external backpack. And here I have 
the seam on my lining so match them up and clip them together then you can do that on the other side as well here we go all right go ahead and clip the entire front panel And then repeat on the back so again you want to match the side seams and clip the top edge once you have that clipped you'll be able to clip the side panel as well so just continue clipping the top edge until you get to the zipper tab here we go just like that then do that on the other side panel as well we go if you want you can measure one centimeter from the center of the side gusset measure one centimeter in both direction and make a little notch use a marking tool that you can remove because you are marking the right side of the fabric so then you're going to do that on both side panels otherwise if you can place your backpack under machine what you're going to do now is to stitch starting at the zipper tab so as close you can get to the zipper tab you're going to sew the seam from one side go around the front panel and then go again as close as you can to the zipper tab otherwise you're going to stop at that notch that you marked and then you're going to sew another seam on the back panel so again you're going to start as close as you can to the zipper tab stitch around the back go all around and then again get as close as you can to the other side of your zipper or that notch that you previously marked After you have stitched those two seams then you can install a rivet on each side so I have one already installed as you can see so I'm going to show you what to do so from the edge of your zipper tab you're going to measure one centimeter so I have a ruler here I'm going to measure one centimeter and make a little notch on the fabric Here we go so next what I like to do is to take a hole puncher and punch a hole so depending on the size of your rivet you may want to punch a hole slightly higher or slightly lower it is really up to you I'm just going to eyeball it just like that then instead of measuring one centimeter on the other side what I prefer to do is to fold my side panels, line up the top edge and then use that hole that I just punched to mark the placement of the hole on the other side. So I'm going to use slightly different pen because I cannot really see it on that black fabric. So I'm going to do that one more time. So what you want to do is basically line up 
the top edges and use that hole to mark the fabric. So here I have the mark. So now I want to make sure that my lining is nice and smooth. I can take my hole puncher and punch another hole. There we go. So next I'm going to take my rivet and then I can insert it through those two holes. Put the cap on. Here we go. Then take your hand press or your other tools and install your rivet. Give your backpack a final press. Otherwise, your Penelope backpack is now finished. Well done!